I don't have any slides. I was actually scheduled to be out of town this week, and uh, when it turned, things changed around, uh, I managed to get tucked in here for a few minutes, and uh, I didn't want to put together slides, so um, we kept it. We kept it short. And I'm interested in the questions that you have, but I'll give you a quick update on what's going on uh, at the ONF. You know, um, it sort of bugged me how closed the Open Network Foundation is. Um, and I think it probably bugs people that are outside uh, more than it bugs those of us that are inside. So we're thinking about starting a Kickstarter to get this whole group and a, a, a membership to ONF so that we can at least be on the mailing list. So if anybody wants to kick in. <laughs> hey, that, that is an interesting plan. Uh, you have to form a, you know, maybe an LLC or something like that. There you go. Yeah, that, <laughs> that, should, that shouldn't take you more than about 10 minutes, right? Second Although I hear that. Maybe as members of the ONF. <laughs> Sorry. Real. Interesting. I think okay. we can actually make that happen. <laughs> so several interesting things happen in, in, in the ONF. Um, uh, we had a change of the, of, I think this is interesting, there's a new director, uh, new chairman of the technical advisory group. Um, so Dan Taleko of uh, Big Switch has uh, stepped up to take that over from Dave Ward of, of Cisco. And, uh, you know, it's a, it's a subtle difference in, in guidance that is available there. I'm looking forward to see how that moves a little bit differently. Um, uh, there's been a change in, in my working group, forwarding abstractions. So Dave's been my vice chair uh, basically since we started. Uh, and even after, essentially right after he joined um, uh, Brocade, we started looking at, okay, well, at some point maybe we're going to need to have a transition. And so we've been doing this in slow motion. And he formally said, well, uh, I'll step down. Um, in fact, it was Tuesday when he announced that. So now we're going to speed up our efforts to, to pick a different vice chair, um, which I look forward to. Uh, you know, Dave's been so busy that. Um, uh, he has other things to do, and we, you know, obviously, Brocade's well represented in that group. Um, uh, there's um, work going on in the architecture group. This is one of those things that goes on behind the scenes, the architecture and framework group, which I think, you know, was overdue when they created it um, in October or whatever it was, and, and Dave's been a part of that. Uh, they came back in January, and they were supposed to have done a whole bunch of stuff, but basically the, the schedules were overly aggressive, and they had been, uh, they, they did a bunch of work as a design team, and then they were supposed to open up to a larger working group. They were unable to kind of get as far as they needed to as a design team, so when they opened up to the working group, the stuff was kind of half-baked in it. And not surprisingly, it kind of went awry, awry after that. And in January, this got reviewed, and they said, okay, go back undercover, uh, work as a design team, which has only seven members, and you're able to make a lot different kind of progress. I haven't checked in on them lately, but um, I think they're supposed to come out from undercovers uh, here in a few weeks, and. and Reemerge as a as a working group again. I'm very interested in what they have to say, but I don't actually know where they're going at the moment. So that's an interesting set of things that are happening in the working group or in the in the ONF. There's the the test working group as well as um, is trying to push things forward. Now looks like there's a number. They're going to do a, a another plug fest in May back in Indiana. Um, now we've got a bunch of people uh, ready to step forward and and um, uh, participate in the plug fest using 1.3. Code. Most products that are out there are 1.0, as I expect you know. Um, there's 1.1 and 1.2, but not really in production on anything. Um, I think there's a couple of open source samples of 1.1 of and 1.2, but n nothing that's production. Uh, so the 1.3 thing has got everybody kind of excited. You know, do you play? You know, do we go with our stuff that's really at alpha, or do we hold back? And um, it's they don't. You know, they do a pretty good job of keeping that quiet, which I think is fair for a plug fest with a bunch of. Um, preliminary code, but um, still, I'm sure it takes some, is it worth, do you benefit from taking a really early code there, or do you just get distracted, right? So um, anyway, so that's, I think that's exciting that 1.3 is going to probably be a part of the, the May plug fest. Um, that's most of what I think about, oh, the new transport working group, which is, you know, I think of as optical networking, but it's probably more than that. Um, they've been working on a, uh, on a, a new charter. So I said they're new transport. They're actually a new transport discussion group. At some point, they'll get promoted to a working group when their charter gets approved. But having gone through that charter approval process, I know that can be painful. Um, and uh, I think they're just about to the point where they can submit um, their new charter. Um, this is making everybody. You know, it's kind of exciting on the one hand, but it also will will introduce yet more. You know, a, a broader spectrum of people that we need to kind of try and please from layer zero, and now there's L4 through seven people, um, you know, wanting to, to participate as well. So, you know, we'll just 
you know, cross all the layers at once, and we, I'm sure we won't break anything, right, in the process. Um, it's a big church, isn't it? Yeah, it's a, a big very big, the tent is really big, and there's lots of camels, you know. Yeah. Uh, so so uh, and that's my update uh, on the ONF. Let's see, uh, on my working group specifically, I saw one question come around about um, whether we're going to backport um, the work in our group. Now, we don't actually add features exactly. We're about um, describing the expectations of the switch um, and having the controller and the switch agree in advance. Will we do that for 1.0? I'm not sure if that's a, a meaningful thing. Well, actually, 1.0 with a single table doesn't have the same problems. Now, the test working group actually would like that. They would like us to do 1.0 and 1.1 and 1.2 or anything that's really in production or really needs to be tested because <laughs> interoperability is a problem right now. Too many, too many um, optional features in, in OpenFlow. And by having a well-defined set of functionality, which is what my working group is creating a framework for, uh, what we call TTPs, uh, table type patterns, um, uh, the test group says, if that defines a, a very crisp and unambiguous set of functionality, we want that for testing. And so, and they, and they also said, we want that for 1.0 and we want it for 1.3. We want it for all the versions of OpenFlow. Um, and so, in that sense, yes, but probably uh, there won't be any 1.0 devices that are um, at runtime having that conversation. Instead, it'll be humans having that conversation and in the testing group having that conversation using our, um, using our concepts. And then it'll be a 1.3 or a 1.4 device that actually does it at runtime. Uh, so, um, in answer to the 1.0 backport, that, that's my answer there. Uh, we're, I had a conversation today about how to do that, that, that negotiation protocol, working with a guy who knows NetConf and Yang a lot better than I do, and he's, he's active in the config working group, which is where we're going to do that negotiation protocol. So things are marching forward. We look forward to, to talking in much more detail during the OpenFlow uh, Open Networking Foundation Workday, which unfortunately is members only, but you guys will have raised the, raised the money by then and be able to participate. <laughs> uh, and you okay. never know, there might be another open flow related symposium for the Tech Field Day people at the next networking yeah. field day. Can we charge I have the no idea. people money I'm to show up? I'm not announcing anything yet. <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about. Um, is there any you can charge $33,000. Right. Is I was just there any gonna... chance that mailing, uh, mailing lists would be made available in an archive so you could at least read and kind of you're curious to observe the going You know, on. I had never heard that proposed, but I think that would be a great idea. Sort of like the... It seems harmless. Like, I have nothing to contribute, but I'm very interested in the proceedings. I'd like to read up. So yeah, and so, something like, um, you know, the central bank, right? The Fed, how they open stuff up with a delay. You know, maybe we could do a, some kind of a delay where we open stuff up. Or we can just all start talking about the closed network foundation. I think we should, actually. I, I think that would be a good idea. I think that's a little risky for me to actually call it that. <laughs> <laughs> you actually feel there's, there's value in raising that in, in the uh, social media space, that there seems more closed than open. Yeah, um, I, I, I do. Not, not an unreasonable thing to say. Yeah, well, um, not at all. I wish we did better things to reaching out to the customer side of things. Who's the customer that's going to sign up for 30000 There's a few of them, a few big kids. But. Uh, I assume the, the methodology is there to have this agile standards framework, right? So not enough people in the room to say no, so you start getting some consensus. But at some point, the ship's in the water, and you know, it's going to be Yeah, we already have a crowd in there. I mean, mostly, as you said, you guys want to listen, not not uh, talk, unless there's yeah. times when we want to know your opinion, and I don't have any good way to ask you. So, uh, what, what are the other questions? I probably went sailing past my 10 minutes already. I'm we very will let you. You got okay. two. All right. <laughs> so based on one of the comments you made about um, optional parts of OpenFlow rather than everyone using the same standard bits. Is this simply that some people are implementing options of the standard or is it that people are adding and customizing the standard to their own needs and enhancing it? You know, because one of the questions we asked yesterday was about, okay, so if I get a controller from one company and, a, and a, you know, an OpenFlow yeah. controller from one place and an OpenFlow switch from someone else, are they even going to talk? Or is this another of these standards in you know, in fingers, that isn't going to work until we've moved forward a bit and we've caught up to the functionality that everyone really wanted. Uh, I think both are true. So uh, there are there are um, optional features in the standard 
there are required features in the standard that not everybody implements, which seems like, well, they're obviously not compliant, except right. it seems like they're able to solve real problems. So maybe, maybe there's a few required things that probably shouldn't have been required, lots of optional things that I, I, don't, I wouldn't say they should be required, but it's hard to know as a controller what you're coding for. Um, and then there's extensions, uh, which are, I think you were referencing there. I think extensions are a great way to move things forward. And obviously, you know, sort of a switch vendor and a controller vendor have to co collaborate to make an extension work. But it's a good way to push things forward as long as we can, you know, find a way to integrate those back into the, into the spec. Um, the stuff that I'm working on in my group makes the optional and required thing, I mean, extensions are a little bit separate and they do help us move forward. Optional and required, well, with our table type patterns that, that describe a collection of functionality, um, that can sort of handle the optional versus required thing because we say, if you're going to support this thing, you got to do all these functions. If, if, you don't, if you don't support those functions, well, fine, you don't support this, this TTP, you support maybe some other TTP. So it allows us to talk about, and it's not, the, our plan is not to create these TTPs in, as standards, but they're like common shared uh, uh, models. Um, and so other members of the community can create them. So you're not bogged down waiting for you know, the next release or next version of the standard. Instead, people say, okay, here is a collection of functionality. It concludes a bunch of tests. You go decide if you think you support this thing, and then eventually the, the test work group will support that as well. So it, it does try to address that, that mix of optional, required but not actually available, required but available, and extensions. Yeah. And it's, it's the extensions that kind of worry me, because that smacks of, yes, at some point they might get rolled back into the standard, but meanwhile, it's kind of like having a, you know, like a pre and access point where, where you better have the USB stick and the AP from the same company or they just ain't going to talk. And I, you start worrying that the same thing will happen with OpenFlow, that you get the vendor lock that everyone was saying we can break away from. OpenFlow is great. We can disassociate controllers from the, the merchant silicon and not care anymore. Well, actually, no, maybe not. No, no. That, I mean, it's a, it's a legitimate concern. And it's, um, I mean, I'm sort of counting on, uh, personally, I think it's good for Brocade and it's good for a number of the other um, challengers to, to have a, a, a real market where, where things are competitive. And given there's a dominant player or two, you know, I think the ones below, what we have to offer is that we're interoperable and we can sort of compete. Because you're quite right. Now, on the other hand, if you say, well, we're not going to support extensions, people can always find a way to, to work around and essentially provide out of band or, or non standard solutions. So we could officially recognize that or not. Either way, I think it moves the thing forward to allow people to, to you know, solve problems in creative ways and then figure out how to incorporate those back in. Um, but you're quite right. It's a risk. If we fail to incorporate those back in, then we're, you know, then we're offering proprietary solutions. In which case, why did we bother? So I think, in, in the case of OpenFlow or SDN, I think the, the real value comes from having interoperability. You know, essentially right. trying to create these layers that allow innovation at different, different layers. Thank you. Kurt, when you're talking about the hardware kind of matrixes, is, is uh is anything in slow path coming back as supported? Is there a differentiation between fast and slow on what is supported? There's, there's no official, and largely because we haven't found a, um, a clean <coughs> way to do it. And historically, when people try to do that, you get bogged down um, and, and you don't make progress. So we're not, we're not formalizing the distinction between fast, well, uh, data and power. Fast, yeah, yeah, hardware and yeah. software data power. Um, uh, it comes up over and over again, but my, what I would like to see is that we just have good benchmarks. Um, and if we try and encode it in the standard, I think we're going to, uh, it'll cost us more than it can. But, but I mean, I'm open to that. So if there's a... Um, no, I, I think controllers need to figure out how to, and at some point, we can't say, oh, well, I want to do an L2 rewrite. and. You know, the operator has no idea that that's going to not pump the software and, you know, not yeah. have the record machine or not be supportive. Now, realistically, I think there is this this notion that, that the controller is going to go connect to a, a, a sea of anonymous devices out there that it knows nothing about. And I think it, in the real world, there will be a tendency to say, well, I'm going to I'm going to be selective about which devices I have out there. And there, you know, before I build this network and, and throw all the pieces together, am I going to put something out there that has really crappy performance? Probably they'll, you'll have to do some work in advance to 
to have a notion that this will work or before the controller do. actually makes the connection. Or a management plane, OBSPB, or OF control, something along those lines to know what your elements are, maybe? Well, th that'll be true, too, but I'm just saying that, that in the real world, um, there's stuff that happens before runtime, yeah. right? And, and although we want stuff to work at runtime, um, yeah. you know, uh, it, it, it doesn't seem like, well, I've got this slow box out there and the controller will go ask it to do stuff. Maybe eventually when we have much richer environment and there's SDN boxes all over the place, then you'll be in that situation. And at that point, I imagine we'll, you'll be able to say, what, what kind of device are you? OK, let me go check my table. Right. Yeah, I see. Here's the benchmark for that device. Right. And even though it's not the standard, that you'll have a way, a way to deal with that. Uh, new standards, uh, new version before the ONS, probably. I assume something else. Uh, 1.4, which would be the new one for the, the switch protocol, um, uh, which is what we now call, what used to be just called OpenFlow, um, is uh, they're working on 1.4. And uh, that last August, the board said, thou shalt develop working code before you uh, approve a standard. So now they've basically got all their ducks in a row, and they're getting ready to go work on working code, ge generate their prototypes. So it's going to take another several months because of this new requirement. Uh, I think that's actually wonderful because now we'll have, um, I think they now have one of three versions of some of the uh, open source soft switches and stuff. Um, so uh, now they have something that they can now go ahead and build 1.4 on. Um, and I'm, I'm guessing sometime in the summer that they'll have that. And then our work will probably come uh, shortly after that. We'll probably benefit from 1.4 and, and build on that. I don't know if that exactly answers your question. No, absolutely. It won't be by ONS. Yeah. So. yeah. That's great. All right. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you.